Hello and welcome to our tutorial. Um, this has taken me quite a while to sort out. I've had a number of uh, problems and issues trying to get this together. So um, we'll have a very quick look at this um, particular tutorial. So it's got a, this is you know obviously a request. So this is a um, quite a bespoke tutorial. Um, so I'm just going to press play and we'll see how things work. So um, I'm staring at the ceiling. So this is my character. And over here I've got like I can walk up the steps here and I've got other steps. Uh, well, they're all black so maybe we should use a different color but anyway there they are. And then here on the wall I've got um, some signs. So if I look at one of these signs, let's say the rotate one, uh, for any length of time using gaze input that becomes the active um, step if i look at this guy here now this becomes the active um, kind of tool now i can obviously put in a whole range of these here i could have i haven't put in down or left or right um, and i could also invert this rotation if i wanted but let's just do up first of all and we'll move uh, so now that we have that selected I can go over here and pick say this set of stairs here and it's popped up and I can do the same with that one pop it up now I'm not going to do it with this one because I haven't put in I haven't implemented the, the down one yet but I'm going to do this one as well I'm going to go up there we go and then I'm going to go to rotate now so now we're going to rotate them so I'm going to look at this guy and Going too fast. That's not too bad. And we'll try this one. A little bit more. Okay, and then he needs to go up a tiny bit more. So again, I need to probably measure like how fast this rotates and how high it goes up. That's too high. But anyway, you get the idea. So now um, I need to probably have one over here that I turn off. So I want to walk up here and I have physics. So if this guy was a bit lower, I'd be able to get up higher. So the idea is that you can, you know, you'll have a door up here or, or some sort of escape location. And, you know, the shape of these is irrelevant. You know, it doesn't matter if these are um, one step or 10 steps or 20 steps or if the steps have weird shapes. That's up to whoever's designing the game okay so let's hit escape here and where is my mouse well, let's have a little walk through how this works um, so a couple of things um, build settings player settings um, so this is new um, so what we were using is under player, I have turned on XOR settings. So I've turned these on and I've loaded in Google Cardboard. Uh, so I haven't exported this as an APK and I don't know if it would work if I did. I assume it will because everything else is the same as before. But uh, you can see here it says it has depreciated this set of tools. So as we have spoken about during the year, uh, frequently tools that you think are stable and being used constantly uh, suddenly disappear so they're trying to they're, they're turning this off very soon so they're replacing it with this thing here the XOR plugin manager which looks fantastic uh, so you've got you know magic leap above oculus windows there's nothing here for android uh, for cardboard or for daydream for that matter and uh, when you do a, a quick google search uh, and you get onto the unity website for this uh, what you find is uh, that they don't exist yet now they probably will maybe when you're listening to this video they'll exist but um, right now they don't exist yet so there'll be one for cardboard and one for daydream when you hit install but as of right now they're not there now if you install one of these nothing will work uh, nothing for cardboard will work I should say you cannot revert to this if you have done this so I because uh, I'm a genius in, in hit install oculus thinking maybe there'd be a drop-down menu that would have cardboard listed in it and it didn't uh, and then once it was installed I had a real pain getting rid of it I had to go to the 
package manager here and un uninstall it from here so anyway uh, so that's the first thing so just be aware that <clears throat> these XOR settings that we have been using for VOR um, may not last much longer in fact they definitely won't then the second thing um, <clears throat> which was kind of slightly uh, a pain as well was uh, we've been working on a game so you can see this here it's called VOR Escape I haven't built on the last game that we were we were working on uh, because my uh, the standard assets for Unity have been turned off or been depreciated as well, and you get all sorts of amazing errors when you start to try and use them. So if I search here for standard assets, um, they're not listed. So there are no Unity standard assets because they're from 2017. So then if I go here to my account and I go to, I think it's my my assets maybe. Uh, they are here so I can actually download them and install them. But you can see here it says depreciated. So that means that the, you know, um, the first person um, uh, rigid body FPS controller that we're using no longer works uh, and genuinely it no longer works it just you get a list of uh, compile errors basically saying it's not compatible with um, you know this library and that library and I did actually try and fix them one by one but there are just too many I gave up after a while so um, so what have I done I've just written my own so um, I have a mouse look script and it's a fairly basic mouse look script, but then um, all of these scripts are b basic is all, um, everything is relevant uh, or relative. So this is not terribly big script. So I'm using the get access mouse X, um, Y, um, I'm rotating. Um, yeah, I, I can go through this with ease if you want. This is a, you know, I, I haven't reinvented the wheel here. Other people have similar, um, rotation scripts uh, up online so this is basically a clamp to stop the mouse being able to invert itself by going all the way to the ceiling or all the way to the floor um, and this is just turning the X and Y rotation of the mouse into um, Z and um, so like basically up rotation um, for the uh, uh, the camera okay so that's that one and then this player movement one is pretty uh, interesting too I have uh, written some of this myself and cogged some of this um, from other geniuses on the internet so this is using a standard character controller and I've got gravity and I've put a ground mask in it and the ground mask basically checks um, if I'm touching the ground and if I am um, then Know, so for example when I, I can jump if I'm um, yeah, so if I'm grounded it will add this here if this is not true if I'm not touching the ground I cannot jump um, so this is fairly straightforward as well again it's using the input get access horizontal and vertical now both of these will work because they're using horizontal and vertical these will use with the the same technique we use for Bluetooth input yeah, so if you are making a VR game and using a Bluetooth controller, you'll still be able to move around. So I'm just going to take, just for simplicity here, my FPS player here. So all I've got is, uh, so this is an empty, and I've put my player movement script on it, and I put a character controller, which is just a generic uh, character controller um, that comes supplied with Unity. Uh, the player body <coughs> is literally a cylinder. Uh, that's unnecessary, I don't need that. Then there's my camera. And then this ground check is an empty, and that's basically, uh, it kind of casts a little sphere to see if the bottom of the character is actually touching the ground, whether I can jump or not, etc. So um, so that's all that is. Um, so, um, yeah, I'm just gonna make my player a little taller. Now the rest of it is a mixture of things I've already done with you and then one or two new things. So very quickly the things I've already done with you, uh, we had a 
tutorial on gaze input where we took this thing here which is the um, under the camera here I've got a gaze canvas so that's uh, this guy here this gaze canvas and it's got a blue circle in it which is this uh, image here on the canvas and we've turned the canvas into a world space canvas um, we've scaled it down hugely like 0 0.1 and changed its width and its height and then we've made this quite small as well and we've placed a circle on it and then we changed the circle from being um, a standard or whatever it is a simple um, image type to a fill so then we have uh, this thing called fill amount and we can wrap around uh, so when we look at things we have got basically a gaze timer and we have another there's another tutorial on the gaze timer so most of this is just using that tutorial, the gaze timer tutorial I've done with you before, and sort of um, just, you know, uh, mixing it up a little bit. So I have these things here, an up marker. So that's um, this here is pointing up. And then beside it is up marker active and its renderer is turned off. So it's this little red box around it. And then I have uh, this here as well with its renderer turned off. Like I said, I could just duplicate these and have a down marker and you know left, right, whatever I wanted, or a non marker one with like you know uh, where I'm not doing anything that might be important as well. Sorry, just pausing for tea. Um, uh, okay, so how do how does it all work? So I've got first of all I've got this thing here called level control, which is just an empty at zero 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 and has a tiny script on it. Uh, called level control and uh, I'll jump into Visual Studio but level control is literally three lines so I've declared um, three bools uh, and they're public static variables so these can be ac accessed from anywhere uh, so any object can find this information so they're they're boolean they're true or false and we've got up down and rotation so rotation can be true or false down can be true or false or up can be true or false so um, when I look at, uh, and I'm not going to go through all of the, um, the gaze input stuff, uh, but basically because we've, we've done it before, you can see here, when I'm looking at this object, it's set to true. When I'm not looking at it, it's set to false. And I change my fill amount from zero, and my fill amount here is like my time divided by the look time up here. Um, and just to remind you, each of these objects has to have an event trigger, and then I have to have a look on, look off, look on, look off, and it's the same for the steps, look on, look off. So we have to basically look onto them, look off to them, or look away from them. So it's quite a, an arduous thing to set up, really, it's, there's a lot of repetition in it. But with the steps, for example, once you set it up once, then you can just duplicate the steps 20 times. and you don't have to do that for each one so what do I do here so basically what what I'm saying here is uh, this script goes on uh, this object here whoops uh, that object okay so when I look at that for my two seconds I make it active um, I'm making it active basically means that I'm turning the move up outline and moving the mesh renderer or turning the mesh renderer on for the red box around it so we can see that the red box is on to indicate it is active and then up is true down and rotate are false and on the rotate on script uh, it's the opposite so I'm having the rotate outline is turned uh, on the red box is turned true and the other one is false and then rotate is set to be true the public static variable and down and up are set to false so these um, public static variables here are switched on and off by looking at um, these cubes that have these scripts on them that are accessing my uh, public static uh, variable uh, so that's pretty much it so i'm just turning them on and off and then i have one script that sits on all of uh, the steps so again it's just using basic gaze input so if I look at it so on trigger enter when I look on looking is true when I look away looking is false my look time is set to zero and the 
this gaze timer, the, the, the reticule is reset to zero. And then this is a quite a simple little script. All I'm doing here is I'm um, saying that if I'm looking at this object for two seconds, so if look time is bigger than total or time total, so if I look for two seconds and level control is set to up, then move me up. Um, and I could, you know, I could be more specific than that. I can move up a smaller amount if I wanted. So it's just a very basic transform that position. And do the same here. I go if look time, uh, if I look for more than two seconds and level control rotation is set to be true, then rotate me uh, one degree. And you can see here that I've got nothing in down because I haven't set up down yet, but it would be um, easy to have this, you know, um, negatized. So this would be minus equals vector three, whatever. Or you could do, with, you know, the, the, you could make it go up a different way if you wanted. So these are fairly basic um, controls, but they're just used in tandem with the gaze input and with these public static uh, booleans. So it's actually, you know, each of these components on its own is quite straightforward. They're not terribly complicated. So in total, we have um, six scripts. So we've got our mouse look script to move our camera around, our player movement so that we can go forward, back, left, and right. Um, the script instructs the steps to go up or down or rotate. Uh, this turns on rotation this turns on going up. I would need another script like this to turn on going down or going left or going right. So if you want more options, then you'll have to create like scripts for each one. And then again, if you have left and right, etc., you'll have more static uh, booleans. Or you could, you know, you could do it with integers. I do. There's loads of ways to do this. But this is just uh, with these three, it's pretty simple. So that's sort of the theory behind it. And as I said, it's quite a slick little um, uh, method or way of working. Um, so it's um, you know it's quite simple, and we, you could have the door anywhere you wanted um, if you had enough pieces to get to it. You could actually even get yourself to a point where you had to uh, walk up one of them. And then while you are on this one, move another one and place it in front of you and then have to move the one that you are standing on um, uh, and put like, you know, move that up towards the top as well. So you could get quite fancy and complicated if you wanted um, in terms of making sort of an escape room. Um, okay, so that's sort of, that's, that's what we'll be looking at tomorrow in, uh, in our session and uh, hopefully that makes sense.